What's going on, guys? This is Aaron with Departures Capital. We're here with the CEO and founder of Nano One Materials, Dan Blondell. How are you doing today, Dan? Fantastic. Nice to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. So Nano One Materials is a technology company focused on changing the way the world makes battery materials. Can you tell us a bit more about the company and what you guys do? Yeah, so we are a technology company, industrial technology to be specific, because we're focused on processing technology to make uh, lithium ion battery cathode materials. That's the stuff that, that enables lithium to go in and out in the battery, move around in the battery to, to, for charging and discharging of the battery. So we have a chemical process um, that is assembling uh, raw materials like lithium, nickel, magnesium, cobalt into a, a, a structured uh, ceramic powder, uh, which is a cathode uh, material. And so that's what a cathode material is. Eventually that goes off to a battery uh, a company who will put it onto a piece of foil and wrap it into a, a cylindrical battery cell or, or fold it into a flat cell like you might have in the back of your phone. But so we, we, but we have this technology to make this powder. Very interesting. So can you talk about what's happening right now in the lithium ion battery industry and why Nano One is primed to disrupt this growing market? So what we're, of course, I think anyone who's familiar with batteries, which all of us are because of the portable devices we have, and those of, you, uh, those of your listeners who are familiar with electric vehicles will also kind of have a really good sense of, of what uh, some of the requirements are. Everyone wants more range, they want lower cost, they want better energy density, um, uh, and these are all sort of driving factors in the, uh, uh, in the lithium-ion battery space. We're seeing uh, we're seeing the uh, adoption of, of batteries coming into some of the major OEMs. Of course, this has been kind of coming on for some time yeah. with, with Tesla and, and, and everyone, but mm -hmm. we're seeing wide scale now adoption of platforms coming in line. And we're also seeing these big automotive manufacturers, not only just taking on, you know, integrating a battery into an existing car or, 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 or an existing framework, but we're also starting to see them really start to focus upstream on the design of the battery cells on the design of the chemistry. Uh, to influence uh, energy density, to influence, to, to be able to stuff more batteries between the wheels to get a longer range vehicle. So those are some of the really kind of big macro economic uh, macro trends that we're seeing in the space. Very, very interesting. So what are the benefits of Nano One single coated cathodes and how do they compare to current products on the market? So I, um, our technology, as I said, it's a, it's a processing technology. So uh, we have these kind of raw material inputs uh, and that make this powder. The powder, a cathode powder just looks like coffee grounds for all mm -hmm. extensive purposes. And each grain of powder is, uh, is, is this little um, sort of clump of, of crystals. Um, and typically in industry, what they do is uh, I have to kind of explain how it's done first to really kind of understand what the difference is. But we typically in the industry, um, they, uh, to make that, uh, that powder, they start with um, metals like, like nickel, manganese, and cobalt. They convert them. They, they come out of the ground. They're mined out of the ground. Uh, and that's where miners kind of make their most money. And that, uh, but they have to be refined into a usable metal at that point, a useful metal. Mm -hmm. And that, that metal, the nickel, the manganese, and cobalt, it gets converted into uh, a sulfate powder. And um, it's very energy intensive process. It's got a big carbon put footprint. It adds uh, thousands of dollars per, per ton to the, to the cost of nickel. And it, it, uh, it quintuples the weight. Um, uh, so nickel sulfate, it's got a whole bunch of water attached to it. It's got a whole bunch of other materials, uh, this, the, the sulfur and the oxygen in there. And it just makes it five times heavier, five times more uh, expensive to ship. Um, it's got five times the carbon footprint because of that shipping. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's very, it's a very energy intensive thing. When that gets to the cathode manufacturer, eventually, what happens is they, um, uh, they combine that with the other the other metal feedstocks in a process to make a, um, an intermediate powder com comprised of nickel, manganese, and cobalt, for instance. And that, um, but all that sulfate and water that came along for the ride goes to waste. So it either has to be landfilled or it has to be upgraded to something um, that's sellable or recyclable. And so, and it's a big waste stream because it's five times the size of the product stream. Um, mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. So as the, it certainly as a, as electric vehicle market takes off and there's more and more batteries being made, you get this waste stream just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and there's, and it's much harder to resell it or do anything with it. So it's probably most of it ends up in the landfill. So that there's kind of a systematic uh, issue with the, with the sulfate that's sitting in between these players. Once you make 
uh, once you make the cathode of this NMC, this nickel, magnesium, cobalt powder, you mix it with lithium. And the lithium is going through its own uh, conversion process to make uh, lithium hydroxide. All this gets mixed and ground together into a powder, mixed powder. It looks, it's kind of a salt and peppery mix. Mm -hmm. It goes into a furnace um, in a tray uh, and slowly the lithium grains of lithium powder sort of combine with the grains of nickel, magnesium, cobalt powder. And eventually you get this kind of cluster of crystals that I talked about before. And to protect the whole thing in a, in a, in a sort of modern advanced lithium ion battery, they have to apply coating to the outside of it. And so that cluster's got this big kind of coating around it. And as the battery, and then, then you take that powder and you, uh, and you coat it onto a piece of foil and put it in a battery. And as you run the voltage up and down the battery, as you charge and discharge the battery, lithium goes in and out of this, this, this cluster and it slowly kind of breaks apart and, and eventually it'll break open that, that coating on the outside and it's more susceptible to side reactions and degradation in the battery. So that's, I haven't even talked about that one, but that's, that's kind of the process. There's a lot of stuff going on there, right? And um, what, we, uh, what we do differently, we've, we've had this uh, patented one pot process and we have now adapted it to make cathode materials directly from the metals. So if you go back to what I was talking about before, the miners make this metal um, and now you can put it directly into a process that goes directly into a cathode material, completely bypassing all that, all that need, uh, all, that, all that water and all that sulfate um, that is can you know, be shipped and, and has a carbon footprint and a cost footprint to it. We also avoid the need to upgrade lithium to hydroxide. So you can go from a, a simpler material there. And then, um, uh, and then when we, we, we combine it all in one reactor and we only, and when we get into the furnace, it produces our sort of single crystal coated material. And, and sorry, it goes back to your first question. What is this single crystal coated material? It's a, it, it's a, each, each uh, grain of powder is again, a whole bunch of little crystals, but we coat the individual crystals so that what happens is when we cook it in the furnace, the coating goes to the outside of each little particle. So oh, now okay. you've got this cluster of coated material. So if it breaks apart, it doesn't matter. It's still protected. And it gives it a more sort of, it's basically a longer lasting material. We, we've seen in the lab something that lasts maybe four, four times longer. So that would be the equivalent of going from 500 cycles to 2000 or 1000 cycles to 4000 cycles. Yeah, that's very significant. So thanks for that explanation. Definitely learned something. So um, the company recently launched new groundbreaking technology called M2 Cam. Can you tell us about that? Well, we kind of just walked through um, a good chunk of it there. And I think that's the M to CAM is really this process of going, making the cathode material directly from the, um, uh, from the, uh, from the metals. So uh, in doing so, as I explained, you get rid of the sulfate, uh, you get rid of the need to convert to sulfate, you get rid of the need to convert lithium to hydroxide, and that reduces um, a whole bunch of the cost uh, and carbon footprint in those conversion processes. And it eliminates the need to ship um, all, the, all the water and sulfate that uh, you don't really need in the cathode material. It's just kind of this carrying thing. So by doing that, you're eliminating all these sort of costs and carbon footprint. And that's essentially what, what, what it comes down to. Um, uh, it's a, uh, just a much simpler way of, of, of streamlining the whole um, supply chain from the miner all the way through to the cathode material. Sounds good. So Nano One inked several exciting partnerships in the last couple of years. What do these partnerships mean for the company? So the um, uh, we, we we are the most notable name in our in our sort of partnership list right now is Volkswagen, and we've yeah. been working with them on on uh, next generation battery materials and also on uh, on on examining the supply chain, just like we've talked about with this metal to cam thing. How do we best leverage that, and uh, how does how does how does that help? Volkswagen or any of the auto companies we're working, how does that help them improve their sort of carbon footprint? How does that help them reduce their costs, simplify the supply chain, um, um, et cetera? So those are, uh, those are kind of the activities that we kind of have uh, uh, undergoing with, with them. And with uh, we also announced another US automotive company in, in December. I can't tell you who they are at this point, but, uh, but activities are furiously underway with them. Uh, we hope to add a few more in the next few months um, uh, as well. Um, but really, at the end of the day, these these companies aren't going to be chemical producers. They're not going to be producing the powders. They they're, they're will, they want to get in and support the activity because it's an improvement overall to the supply chain. 
um, the uh, the fulfillment of that uh, demand we're trying to create with the, with the OEMs is really uh, upstream with the chemical producers, the, the, the guys who make cathode materials today or the guys who want to make cathode materials in big chemical companies. And there we are developing our process um, uh, really at a manufacturing level, but also um, uh, looking at new formulations of, let's say, nickel, manganese, and cobalt and different coatings and different additives to make, uh, to, to bring uh, different properties to the materials, maybe to make them charge fast or maybe to make them last longer, maybe to make them cost less. All of these things kind of form a different parts of the uh, of different aspects of, of all these different partnerships. So the idea there is, is there we're really, we're really just kind of designing at a plant level uh, for piloting um, to our, uh, ultimately to our sort of OEM partners. Interesting. So Nano One's ongoing success can be attributed to seasoned leadership. Can you tell us about your key members and what they bring to the table? Yeah, so um, uh, I come from a, uh, you, your, your listeners probably already know this, I come from a technical background, of course, um, and uh, but I'm not really the heavy lifter technically. Uh, Stephen Campbell is our uh, chief technology officer, and he came out of Ballard Power Systems, and also uh, uh, there was a spinoff out of Ballard called called AFCC, uh, which was Daimler, Ford, and Ballard. And they were working on the automotive side of the, of the fuel cell industry. And that wrapped up successfully a half dozen years ago. Stephen came over to work for us at that point, and, uh, and he's been instrumental in setting forth our roadmap, technology roadmap that, that we're on. The m cam the single crystal, our, our no cobalt high voltage spinel stuff, which we haven't even talked about yet. Um, so all of that is really kind of instrumental to his vision. Um, and then uh, we most recently brought on uh, a fellow named Alex Holmes, who has uh, 20 years in the uh, in the capital markets, 10 of it on the investment banking side and 10 of it on, on the sort of commercial side of it, uh, work, working in natural resources and, and technology companies. So tremendous amount of uh, uh, strategic expertise there and, and sort of execution um, success as well. Uh, um, Paul Matisic is our chairman. Uh, for those of your listeners who don't know him, he's led somewhere between two and three billion dollars of enterprise growth in the last sort of 10 years, 10 years of it, 10, 15 years of his life. And uh, with uh, a lot of it in the energy metal space. So he certainly knows the, the lithium ion battery space very well. And then we have two advisors that have played a really fundamental role in us in sort of building our relationships. Joe Lowry on the lithium side and Bob Morris on the nickel and cobalt and, and cathode side. Uh, both of them have, have been, uh, wor they've worked actively selling their respective metals um, in, uh, in Asia, China, uh, Japan, so I have, uh, have a, a huge amount of experience and, and are now uh, consulting in the space and, and, and are able to really kind of make the kind of connections we need with the miners and the cathode companies and the and within the lithium miner battery supply chain. Awesome. That's quite the team. So is there anything else coming down the pipeline that investors should watch out for in the coming months? Well, there's, an, you know, there's, there's always going to be sort of more technology announcements. I think uh, I think keep an eye on this metal to cam thing. It's really the M to cam. It's really um, we're really just started launching it, and I think it's uh, it's got the excitement of the OEMs. The miners uh, love it because it creates more value for their product. Um, so uh, you know we're working on developing partnerships at, at either end of the supply chain. There, we're also working on more partnerships with the chemical and, and cathode companies. So in the, in the coming months, we'll be sort of bringing more and more of those partnerships online and adding to our, our list of, uh, of recognizable names. Um, so that's that's a very important thing. Um, from a from a technology side, we're also we have a we have this product that we make called high voltage spinel. It's a cobalt free high voltage material, and it's suitable for next generation batteries, solid state batteries. And there's a number of developments underway uh, there as well. Uh, the nice thing about this material is it's cheap, it's relatively inexpensive material. It's got uh, it's got no cobalt. It runs at a voltage that is much higher or considerably higher than any other uh, kind of lithium ion battery. So it doesn't generate as much heat. It's got lots of power, uh, charges very quickly. So it meets a, a number of the, the, the desired parameters in a, in a lithium ion battery as well. And so those are those are also um, uh, very uh, very compelling. We are looking at. Uh, um, at expanding, um, uh, you know, we continue to expand our our investor base, not only on the retail side, but also on the uh, 
on, on really on, on the institutional side. So we've seen a shift over the last year towards institutional investors, and we get there's more and more institutional interest in what we're doing. And I think that really helps round out the um, uh, round out our investor base, create the kind of volumes that people like to see, and uh, and at the same time give the give the company a lift and support and longevity uh, that it needs as well. So uh, we'll continue to work on that and 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 explore uh, ways to increase our our. Uh, increase the, the number of eyes on the stock and, and, our, and our shareholder base. Yes, very exciting time. So finally, how can investors get in touch with you or where should they go for more information? Well, certainly there's our Nano One website, so N-A-N-O-O-N-E dot C-A. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, uh, there's an investor, uh, there's an investor uh, sign up there. You can get, you can certainly follow us in that way. We have a, uh, we have a Twitter following. We have a kind of LinkedIn following. Uh, all of that's kind of accessible through the through the uh, uh, web page, and, and we're constantly putting out uh, material and news releases. So it's well worth your while to uh, sort of sort of tag in and see what we're doing. Um, uh, uh, we've always got uh, something to talk about, and happy to share it with the investment community. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dan. It was a pleasure. Learned something, and excited to cover your story as uh, time goes on. Great. Well, thanks very much. Appreciate the opportunity to, to meet you and, and your audience. Thank you. All right, guys, that wraps up the video. Thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to say, if you do support me, the channel and all these videos, then kindly smash that like button along with hitting the subscribe button and the bell for notifications for future videos. I did also want to say, check the disclaimer down below. This video was sponsored by the company that we are talking about today. So check the disclaimer, full disclosure, and um, we're out of here. Always remember guys, Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you make your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. We'll see you guys in our next video.